Hello to all, welcome to the channel Cloud Knowledge. Today in this video, we'll study about connecting and querying Azure database for MySQL Flexible Server. This video is in continuation to the playlist we have created for Flexible Server MySQL. And in the previous videos in the series, we have studied about creation of this flexible server using portal. Then we studied about connecting and querying MySQL flexible server using MySQL Workbench and Data Studio. In this video, we are going to use the same MySQL database flexible server, which we have created in the past videos. And we are going to connect to that database using .NET. If you look at the page, we are under the official documentation page of Microsoft for MySQL database and this page is having the quick start to use .NET C Sharp to connect and query the data present inside the MySQL flexible server. So let me first show you the database which we have created. This was the database CK MySQL DB which we have created and this database is our flexible server MySQL. The details of the database are shown in the overview tab here. The server name, admin login name is present here. We have connected to this database using MySQL Workbench. This is my MySQL Workbench. You can see MySQL Workbench. We have logged into this database using the credentials. And inside this MySQL Flexible Server, we had created two different databases, TestDB and TutorialDB. So we have seen that we created a flexible server. We connected to that server using MySQL Workbench. And now in this video, we are going to connect and query using csharp.net. Okay, so the two databases we already have, we are going to create the tables and perform some SQL queries using .NET. So let's go back to the documentation, the quick start. Okay, the prerequisites first. The first prerequisite is you should have the Azure account active subscription. Second is you should have flexible server. These two prerequisites we have already met. Then third is based on whether you are using public or private access, complete one of the actions below to enable connectivity. So the first option is create a database and non-admin user. We'll open this hyperlink. It will take us to this page, create users in MySQL. Okay, so if we go down here, it says that we have to create database test DB. And if we go to the MySQL workbench, we have already created test DB. Okay, then now the database is created. You can start with a non-admin user with the create user MySQL statement. With the help of create user command, we will create a DB user identified by this password. Okay. So we have to copy this command and execute in MySQL workbench. This has already been done. Next is to verify the user permissions. Run the show grants MySQL statement to view the privileges allowed for user DB user on test database. So on test database, we have created this user and we will execute. So we will execute this command use test db show grants. So if we just copy and execute here to show the permissions, we will see the permissions which are allotted to this db user. So these were the basic steps of creating non admin user, then verifying the permissions of it. So this was a prerequisite of creating database creating a non-admin user, verifying its permission. Now let's go back to the original documentation. This step is done. Next is to install the .NET SDK for your platform. Since we are working on Windows platform, so we will install .NET SDK for our Windows platform, which is already done in our case. So this is the link you can install as per your platform compatibility. Okay, so we'll close now. We'll go back here. Now, after meeting all these prerequisites, we have to create a C Sharp project. At the command prompt, we have to execute these commands. That is to create this directory, mkdir is make directory this, then enter into that directory .NET new console .NET add package MySQL connector. So here in the documentation, they have written to create the project using command prompt. You can either use this option of using command prompt or we can directly do it through Visual Studio. So here I have my Visual Studio open with me and, and we are going to create the project from here only rather than using command prompt. So I'll show you in files we have to go 
and then we have to click on new project now from here we have to select the console app template just click over it go next let's give the project a name so we'll give it mysql connect and query this looks fine we'll go next framework let it be default click on create so at the right bar you can see the project which we have created the dependencies and the program.cs file will be open for us okay this is done so instead of executing in command prompt we have done it through visual studio ui we'll go back get connection information so the first step is to log into the azure portal then go to all resources search for your server and get the server name and the admin login name this i've already shown you that we are going to use our existing mysql flexible server which is having these details the server name server admin login name the server name is ckmysqldb.mysql.database.azure.com and the admin login name is ckmysqldb so we have these two details copied with us okay next is step 1 connect and insert data use the following code to connect and load the data by using create table and insert into sql statements the code uses the methods of the mysql connection class so here in dotnet or c sharp we are going to use the class mysql connection and three methods of it open async to establish connection to mysql create command that sets the command text property execute non query async to run the database commands important three methods of the mysql connection class we are going to use now the code is given to connect and insert data where we are going to execute create table and insert into commands you can see here the code is given here if we go down we have the server related details server database user id password ssl mode here instead of this we will give the server name ckmysqldb then our database name user which we have created okay in the previous state db user and its password here we can see the open async method which is opening the connection for us creating the connection to mysql because we have imported the mysql connector here and then after open async we have create command method and then execute non query async where we are executing the commands using the command text so here we have the create table command and insert into so what we'll do is we'll copy this and we'll paste it in a notepad if you open the notepad i have created four sections here connect and insert section read section update and delete all four sections where i have simply pasted the same code from here and edited the server database user id password you can see here server name ckmysqldb azure.com database test db as i've shown you that in this server we have test db and the server related details you can see here ckmysqldb that we have given user id is db underscore user then the password this user this db user we created in the previous step here we created using this link okay here we created the database and the db user the same we have used here okay then we have the rest of the code here so we'll just take the entire code we'll copy this code we'll go to visual studio and in the program.cs we will just paste the code okay you can see the code is pasted but it is giving us error so if we hover over mysql connector it shows us that the mysql connector could not be found so in order to import this mysql connector package we have to go to the dependencies under the project right click then go to the manage new get packages and here make sure the package source at the right side is selected as nuget.org then we'll browse and here we'll search for mysql connector search for it in the result you have to look for mysql connector just click over it then here we have install icon so we'll click over this and the page will show that it is getting installed we'll click okay and here we have this install button we'll click okay and now we can see that this is installed 
and now the button has changed to uninstall. So now we know that this MySQL connector is installed from the package source. Now we'll go back to the program CS here and the error we'll see is now gone. Now we can execute the complete code. So we'll click on execution. Since it's a console app, we'll see a notification here in the form of console. It's opening connection using the open async method. And we could see number of rows inserted is three. Okay. Three rows are inserted. Why three rows? Because in the code, we have given three rows here. In the command, if you see created table inventory inserted into inventory, these three rows, banana, orange, apple. And the output at the console, we have given as number of rows inserted the count, which is three. Now let's go to the MySQL workbench and here we'll right click on the database and click on refresh all. Now the tables section is having inventory as the table created. So we'll select data from testdb.inventory and we could see data is created. Okay. Table is created and three rows are inserted into inventory table in the testdb database. Okay. So the first part we have done from this connect and insert data using C sharp. We'll go next. Read data. Step two is read data. Use the following code to connect and read data using the select SQL statement. The code uses MySQL connection. Here the code will use the same class with these methods. Open async will be the same. Create command will also be the same. Here new method is there that is execute reader async to run the database commands. Then read async to advance to the records in the results. Same, we have to replace the server related details here. So the same code we have copied into the notepad here under the read tab here, the read section. We have made the changes, server level details we have given and we have the command that is select star from inventory to see what all results are coming from the inventory table to read the contents of the table. So we'll just copy this command go back to the Visual Studio and we'll just paste in the program.cs file here and execute. It's opening connection. And in the result, we can see it is reading from the table all the three different rows. The content of the table is displayed here, right? In the result, you can see that we are writing, reading from table 0, 1, 2, that is the first row, second row and third row are displayed. Okay. Now, this is done. We'll go back to the official documentation. Next step is to update data. So use the following code. The code is given for updating the data. And code uses same MySQL connection class with the methods open async, create command, execute non query async. So we have copied the code and pasted here un under the update tab of the notepad. Here we can see the server related details our server, flexible server, and then update command here with the value which is going to be changed. And we are writing number of rows updated. So we'll just copy entire code. We'll go to the Visual Studio. We'll just control A, control V in the program.cs file. And we will execute. In the console, we can see connection is open. Number of rows updated is one. Okay. What we updated, we can see here in the MySQL workbench. So banana is 150. We can see that it will be updated to 200. Yeah. The quantity has been updated to 200 using the update table command. Now we'll go back to the query. Here, the step four is to delete data. Delete SQL statement we are going to use in the code. And the code uses MySQL connection class, open async, create command, execute non-query async. So we'll just copy. We have already copied to the notepad in the section here, delete, where we have the server related details, delete from the table where name is orange. The SQL statement to delete one of the record where the value is orange. So orange row will be deleted and in the output number of rows deleted we are going to display. So we'll copy the code, we'll go to the Visual Studio, we'll just control A, control B, 
Here we'll stop the previous execution, execute the new query. It's opening the connection, it will show up that yeah, number of rows deleted is one. Now we'll go to the MySQL workbench. Here we are seeing orange, but now if we execute, after execution of the delete command, we'll see only two rows are present now. Okay, let's go back. So we deleted two. So we did deletion before that updation, read and creation, that is creation of table and inserting data using C sharp code. I hope you have understood this simple demo on how we can connect and query to MySQL flexible server using C sharp. Do try it out and let me know if you face any issue. Thank you for watching this video. Happy learning. Bye.